it's Gwen. Welcome back to my channel. I am finally here to share with you the best and worst of 2016. I did this last year, so I will have that video linked down in the description box for you to check out if you were interested in my best and worst of 2015. As with last year, I am combining them together because you actually expressed last year that you liked how I put them together. And also, again, the best are my favorite books and the worst are the ones that I was either disappointed by or didn't like or they weren't memorable. There's all different kind of reasons why they ended up on the list. I'm not going to go too much into detail about the plot, just maybe the reasons why I didn't like each book. There are 10 on my worst and 10 on my best. Let's jump right in. So I only have three of the books on my worst list. The other ones I have gotten rid of. So I feel that that's a huge accomplishment that I've only kept these three books around because I don't think that you should keep around books that you really don't like. So there are reasons that I have kept these three particular books and but let's go ahead and talk about them. So the three that I actually have physical copies of we'll go into first. The first one that I want to talk to you about is Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Every time I talk about Colleen Hoover I feel like I have to defend her for some reason because people always say that there's unhealthy relationships, the storylines are unrealistic, and every time I read it I'm like no that could actually happen. And some of the relationships that I have personally gone through myself I don't wish on anybody, but from those stories I know that stories like she writes can really be realistic. But in this particular story I think that Tate and Miles' relationship went a little too far. Something happened to Miles when, you know, in his past. And even though he went through that tragedy, I still don't think the way he treated Tate was appropriate. And it just kind of really rubbed me the wrong way. There were some great scenes and there were some really good lessons learned but overall I was just uncomfortable reading this. Next up on my list is Passenger by Alexander Bracken. This one is about Etta hopping around. She's able to time travel. She goes through different centuries and different time periods. There were some things that I liked about it each time period that you went to in each place. I liked that there were historical moments thrown in but overall the story was just a little bit all over the place so I didn't really care for this one plus it just seemed to drag on. His truth by Susan Denner. This is her debut novel. I know that this is super hyped um, and I know a lot of people loved this. However, I just thought that it was really confusing. The plot was non-existent. We're told that Izzy and Safi are best friends instead of being shown. Nothing happens. The magic isn't explained. And I don't know, just overall this book was missing a lot. I know that it has, you know, it's going to be a series so there's time to build on that and that's why I'm hanging on to it just in case I feel like going on in the series. The rest of the books on my worst list I don't have physical copies of so again that is a bonus. But the first one that I read like towards the beginning of the year and just stuck with me as being one of the worst books that I've ever read is Hurt Go Happy by Jenny Rorby. I picked this up because I was going to college to be an American Sign Language interpreter. And so anything with American Sign Language I was interested in, I picked this up for that specific aspect. And while it did have American Sign Language in it, it just didn't have enough. And I don't think it was like well explained and Hmm, I don't know. This story was just missing something for me. There were a couple of great moments towards the end. I mean, near the end, I was crying. I was laughing. I was elated. I was heartbroken. But overall, it just like missed the mark. It was pretty boring in the beginning. And I was looking for Hurt Go Happy. That's such an odd title name. So I was looking for a reasoning behind that. And you don't get it until like towards the end of the book. So then it started like coming together and being really good. But to have to like read through the beginning to get to that ending, I don't know if it's quite worth it. The next one is Etiquette and Espionage by Gail Carriger. I'm not sure if I'm saying her last name right, but I'm pretty sure you guys know who I'm talking about. This is a YA steampunk um, story about girls that go to this mysterious finishing school and I went into it strictly for the steampunk elements however they were severely lacking. Now our main character is really witty and brave and I really liked her but nothing goes on around her. The mysterious finishing school was kind of boring. A couple of cool things happen along the way but nothing really exciting. There's a werewolf, there's a vampire, and while the writing wasn't terrible it was severely clunky. To me this read more like an elementary school read, like someone in like 
third, fourth, or fifth grade could read this and enjoy the story. However, the vocabulary did not match that reading level, so I found that very strange. Next up on my list is Far From You by Tess Sharp. This is another one that I read pretty early on in the year and it's just stuck by as like one of my worst reads of the year. This follow this chronicles Sophie's life after her best friend dies, is well, her best friend's murdered, and the story is told like present and past, kind of flipping back and forth, and you're trying to find out the story is kind of revealing itself to you, like what happened, why did her friend die and not her, who did it, and so forth. And honestly, the build up to the reveal is actually a hell of a lot better than the reveal itself. I Take You by Eliza Kennedy. I was hoping to love this book because it's very controversial. There's a lot of like controversial reviews out there for this book, but I went into it with, you know, an open mind and I thought I was going to love it because the premise sounded really cool. Unfortunately, when I read it this summer, I was severely disappointed. There's no details. It's very sloppy. It has cheating, drugs, alcohol, and at a having a book about marriage contain all of those things. It was just a little bit much for me. It also seemed like there were like things done like for shock value rather than like adding to the story or adding, you know, or fitting the story really. So that book was just like a complete mess. Witches Volume 1 by Scott Snyder. And that is because it's so forgettable. The only thing I remember about it is that I actually used it as a books for trade because someone was excited about it. The artwork was horrible. That's the only things I really remember. The story was not creepy or suspenseful or mysterious or like a great thing to read during Halloween or anything like that. I just, the artwork was so bad, I really couldn't attach myself to the story or really enjoy the story just because of the artwork. I have two more books on my worst list. The next one is The Girls by Emma Klein. And this was like a blockbuster, you know, book that everybody was reading and loving. I just didn't get the hype. I don't really think that it was the writing per se. And I did read the entire book, which kind of shocked me because I thought about DNF in it quite a few times, but I had to see what the hype was about. Um, really, the story was just kind of boring it didn't really go anywhere. I didn't find the characters interesting and the correlation between the whole Manson murders and things like that and that kind of like cult thing. It didn't really fit and it was told like present and the ladies telling about her past. I don't know. It just, I didn't really enjoy it. So if you did enjoy that book, I think that you will actually like this other book that I read that is similar. It's called Cruel Beautiful World by Caroline Levette and I will leave that linked down below because I actually really enjoyed that so much more and it's kind of along those same lines. I think if you liked the girls you'll like this. So there's that. Last book on this list that I'm going to talk to you about is This Too Shall Pass by Melania Basquet and this story was so boring. It's a very short book. The cover is very beautiful, but the story itself is so boring. It's an international bestseller, and I don't know how because it is the most boring book I've probably ever read, and I've read some snoozers, but this tells the story of a 40-year-old woman named Blanca or Bianca? Blanca, I think her name was, and her, she's grieving the loss of her mother. Her mother has passed on, and she's grieving the loss, and I guess they were really close because she grieves for a really long time, so she decides to go on this, like, summer vacation or something like that, and, like, some friends of hers and her ex-husband, and I don't know, they all go to this, like, town or, like, city or whatever. It's, like, in a foreign country. I don't even remember the name of the place, but they go there, and nothing happens. Nothing. All of the characters run together, including the main character, all of the side characters. There's no plot, no resolution. I wouldn't even waste your time. So now that we have talked about the worst books of 2016, let's talk about some of the awesome books that I read in 2016. As with last year, these are not necessarily published in 2016. These are just the best books that I personally picked up and read in 2016. I'm actually not going to do these in any particular order because some of these really hold like I could put them in any slot. They're all so good. So the first one that I'm going to talk to you about is a book that I just read in the month of December and that is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I have been hearing since this book debuted that it was amazing, that everybody should pick it up, it's going to be a great series and all of this. And I'm not like a, really a fantasy reader, so I didn't think it was for me. It's an adult fiction fantasy novel um, and I it's 
rather chunky and it's a debut so I was like just really scared about it but I read it in December and I was blown away it is so cool the characters the setting just the plot and the magic and just everything I thought it was so well crafted the world there's a like a glossary here in the back that talks about all of like any terms you may not be familiar with but the warden and Paige and just the fight against the evil was just awesome, but um, Claire Page is a clairvoyant, so she's sent to this, like, town where they train people, but she's being held basically, like, against her will. They, like, kidnapped her, basically. I don't know. It's just so good. It's so fast-paced. One thing that I realized about this, reading this, is that fantasy, you kind of just have to push yourself through it a little bit, like, if you're a beginning beginner fantasy reader like I am you may not understand every single word that's being said like in a contemporary or something like that but as a whole it works so don't pick apart fantasy every single word read the work and then judge it so loved this and I'm so excited because in the mail today I got the second book in the series the mime order by Samantha Shannon and I am so excited oh my gosh Loved Girl in Pieces by Kathleen Glasgow, which is also a debut, and it blew me away. I loved this book so much. It's about a girl that cuts herself, and it's not about the fairy tale ending. It's about putting one foot in front of the other and making the next chapter in your life what you want it to be. And the characters in this book were all flawed and beautiful and raw and just so realistic and her story is just so realistic like it just came together perfectly like seriously perfectly I loved this book so much I also fell in love with The Graces by Lori Evie not only did I fall in love with The Graces but I fell in love with the River and River Story and I think what's so great about this book is it has that great mixture of awesome characters, cool world building, like you want to be in this town knowing these people and they just stick with you. And a lot of people have compared this book to Twilight and I don't think it's a very good, you know, if you love Twilight, you're going to love this. I don't think that at all, but it does have that like mysterious family element, kind of like Edward's family was. Um, so that's where I think they're drawing the similarities but it was just awesome it's about a family of witches or possible witches the whole book you're trying to figure out like are these witches is there witchcraft going on I don't know it's just so cool and the end of the book mind-blowing so book number two of this is definitely on my most anticipated releases of 2017 it doesn't have a title or a cover yet but I'm so excited I also read and loved a little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. This is a book that I had been hearing about forever and ever and ever and ever, but it's such a chunky book. So it, I was so intimidated by it. And I have heard nothing but good things. Like literally nobody I've ever talked to, watched, read has said that this is a bad book or that they did not like it. It's such a moving, realistic portrayal of four male friends that meet in college and it just follows them decade after decade after decade. They go from, you know, 20 somethings to like in their, you know, middle age and it's so good. It deals with so many real issues, family issues, friendship issues, relationship issues, cutting, mental illness, um, food restriction, um, child molestation, just everything it's so it's such a good book there are so many trigger warnings for this book don't forget to look up this book and tread lightly if you decide to pick it up because I think it's great but I think it could be triggering for a lot of people. It kind of was for me, if I'm being honest. I also read and adored The Raven Cycle by Maggie Steve Otter. I think out of all the books, The Raven Boys is my favorite. And I just say that because we were introduced to all of the characters in here and I had tried it on audio and it didn't really work out. And I read it in physical form and I am obsessed with these characters. Like Blue and The Raven Boys are just like friendship goals. Like I just love them all together. Everybody is unique. Each person has their own voice and I don't know it's just like friendship and 
you know, it's kind of a little bit like the Goonies, you know, they're going to look for this dead Welsh king and just the writing was excellent. The characters were awesome. It was so atmospheric, like living in Virginia. And this was set in like a, a his, like a fake um, Henrietta, Virginia. I could just feel it. Like I thought I was there and I don't know. It was just so cool. Now the next book that I'm going to talk to you about is a fantasy book that blew me away and it was the first fantasy book that I had ever read that made me feel like this about fantasy. So I was like, there's hope for me to like fantasy. And that is A Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. I did a whole like talk about this book where I also made the, the coconut scones um, from the recipe here on the back. So if you're interested in that, that's somewhere on my channel. But this book, you guys, so cool. I love the fact that the writing was so accessible. I loved the main character. She was fat. She loved food. And yes, yeah, she did lose weight along the way. Um, but that's like a product of being in this story in this environment, not, you know, she's trying to lose weight or something like that. Um, but I did like so many things about this book. What probably I liked the most was that you kind of got comfortable in the story and then the story would completely flip and it would just change and you're like what happened it would just do that and it did that several times and it's just so amazing but I'm crazy I haven't even bought the other two books in this trilogy yet what is wrong with me I need to get those ASAP the Girl in 6E is definitely on my list, but I'm including all of the books that have been published so far. I'm hoping there's more, but The Girl in 6E, what a ride. I've never read anything like that, and it's kind of like a thriller, erotica. It's just crazy. This girl wants to kill people. She fantasizes about killing people, so she locks herself in her apartment so she doesn't kill people. And she has, she never goes out of her apartment. She has zero human interaction. And it just, oh, such a crazy ride. And each book that you pick up, it's just, it's just so good. And it just fits and it doesn't feel forced. And I just need more. First book that I ever read by Victoria Schwab I absolutely loved and that was This Savage Song by her. And I loved this book because even the monsters in the story, there were three different types of monsters, they were all so distinctive and I wanted to learn about all of them, but I loved August. He was one of our main characters. He's a monster, but he really wants to be human and he wants to do good. Kate, on the other hand, our human main character, um, is a little bit monstrous and that's because she's trying to gain the approval of her father. I just, I loved this story, you guys. It was really good. I can't wait for the second book, Our Dark Duet. It's coming in 2017. So I know I had Colleen Hoover on my worst list. I also have her on my best. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover was such an important read for me personally. It tells the story of Lily and Lily's story began with her mother and father being in a domestic abusive relationship so she grew up seeing that and living that and she befriended this homeless guy that lived behind him and she kept a journal about it and that was so cute but also she had to see her mother deal with that so she's always had you know probably problems with relationships but then, you know, years later, her father has died. That's kind of where the story starts. Her father has died and she's on this rooftop and she's trying to move on with her life. She bumps into this great guy. They start this great relationship and just the domestic abuse and violence is prevalent in this book. And if that's something that's triggering to you, I would definitely look up a lot about this book, but it's so good and it's such an important read and it's fast paced and it's entertaining. So definitely this book. But the number one book on my list, it was really hard to choose between It Ends With Us and this book, but this book just, I don't know, it just kind of stole a little piece of my heart and that is One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I actually am probably going to buy every book that she writes because I loved her writing style. It was super fast paced. It was kind of contemporary, but it dealt with like deeper issues. This tells the story of Emma Blair who marries her high school sweetheart. Her husband on their one year anniversary goes on a helicopter ride to one of his assignments. The helicopter crashes, he's pronounced dead, and of course now Emma is grieving. So she moves back home to stay with her parents. She bumps into an old friend, Sam, and then Sam and her rekindle their friendship. 
It turns into a relationship. Now they're engaged to be married. And then she finds out that her husband is not dead. This is the love triangle when people say they hate love triangles. That love triangles are just made up in books and stories. No, they're real. And this is the perfect example of that. I loved her husband, Jesse. I loved Sam. I loved all of the characters in this book. I loved how she was torn between her perfect marriage and something that she built afterwards. I don't know. It was such a good read. I cried. I just loved it so much. And there's this quote in the beginning that I felt was just like, after Sam, I started dating. I noticed my laugh lines were getting deeper. This is most likely because I am growing older, but I can't shake the feeling that it's because I am laughing more than I ever have. What else could you want in a person other than kindness and humor? I'm not sure anything else really matters to me. And that quote has just stuck with me all year. I'm going to get a little emotional about it. So best book of the year, One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I can't wait to read any of her other books. But there are my best and my worst of 2016. I hope you have enjoyed learning about what I read and what I liked and what I didn't. Let me know down in the comment section down below what was your favorite read and your worst read of the year. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And I'll see you with more cool videos in the new year. Happy New Year. Enjoy the day and I'll see you next time.